Thank you there. We're in practice mode here, so. Hey, yeah, same here. <laughs> All right. There. The, um... I've already uploaded. Um, Canva? In Skype, yes, Canva. Okay. Can you check, but um, is he a multifamily coach or? Mm, he does like Wait. mix and flips. Mm. Where, where is it? Is it all my designs? I'm trying to look for it here. I don't see it. It's or... in Skype. I've already uploaded it. Is it in Canva though? You could yes, it's in Canva. Where the first two, the one that I've edited. Uh, the first two. Check on all your designs. And then there would be like a replay then problem. And also the one with our welcome strategic alliance I've sent to. On your Skype, I've uploaded yeah, Canva, the copy. We're, we're just, just focus on Canva. Where in Canva? Oh, Canva. Right now. Yeah. That would be under the, under the photo with um, Peter, live replay. Here it is. I see it. Fantastic. Okay. Okay, great job. Oops. Okay. And then we're gonna um uh, go there and then we got um upload and I'm gonna add my photo here. So let's go with um Steven, I'm going to say today's guest, Brett Swartz, and then I'm going to put a photo of me. Here we go. And I'm just going to go. How you doing today? So you work in the graveyard today, huh? How does that feel? <laughs> <laughs> Is it middle of the night there, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's around 12, yeah. about to go on. Yeah, this is good though. So we've got like a hundred and... I went live to support my boss. <laughs> absolutely, I love it, Pink. I absolutely love it. Huge. I've already sent out a campaign for your live today Fantastic. and sent them the link on your Facebook and your YouTube account. Beautiful. Great job. Mm -hmm. Yep. And yes, I need all the support. Okay, cool. So mm -hmm. we got this and, um, and then once you're taking notes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so I will. No, it needs to be my eyes and ears, all right? Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got six minutes here down to the wire. I'm downloading this and putting it into PowerPoint. Inkscape, all right. And go ahead and duplicate the slide. Hmm. Oh my god. Let's go ahead and download. 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 Looks like I'm floating. I gotta redo it one more time. <laughs> gotta take this, put it down just a little bit. <laughs> put it like that. I know you can't see it. So. You've got a lot of attendees right now. Yeah, it's building up. All right, this is gonna be so much fun. Okay. Okay.
panelists should be able to jump in. I see if you see Mitch there. No. Okay. Photo. Hang on. Hmm. Hmm. Pictures, there it is. Bruce O'Brien's. Okay. Bruce Cohen. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Bruce. Bruce. Let me go this. Marketing. Mitch, right there, there it is. Okay. Good to go there. All right, and then um, we got Pink Pink. How many more panelists are jumping on? Turn on original sound. Okay. Make sure Mitch can get on here. Want Mitch to jump in two minutes. Hmm. I need to, so I'm gonna call Mitch right now. Julie. Okay. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm -hmm. go for the webinar we are in we might be I think we're just gonna have to go here uh, so start webinar I don't know where they're at
Hello, everybody. We're going to get started here in a minute. We're getting Mitch on right now. Thank you for your patience. Hello. All right, Mitch, how you doing? Technology, can't live with it, can't live without it. You know, sometimes it's like seamless and sometimes it's a little bit challenging. So why, hold, hold, hold your thought real fast here. I'm also going to, uh, to go, uh, going to go live here for our, um, for the rest of our audience. So just give me, give me one second as I, as I link all of so that. I, he I heard we have so many participants that we have to go to Facebook Live because we can't hold it all on Zoom. Exactly right. Exactly right. It's uh, it all kind of. Uh, uh, it makes sense because uh, it sounds like too good to be true, but I, I'm I, I'm living proof that that uh, it's a super option. So for those that, while while you're doing that, I'll just let everybody. We're we're going to be talking about how to legally break free from. Uh, capital gains tax using a tax deferred trust and this will supersede or you won't have to go through the time limitations and the constraints of a 1031 exchange necessarily because one of the problems is usually we want to sell our big properties when everything's really really hot and then it's not a good time to buy a property with that money because things are really really hot so sometimes you need to buy and then give yourself a little more time and 1031s change doesn't necessarily give you enough time to let an economy kind of change, uh, you know, or give you time to find in a hot market, find a great deal because it takes more time to find a good deal in a hot market. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Did I get that right, Brett? You got it exactly right, Mitch. You know, and it's actually, it's just it's as simple as that. You know, parents talks to sell high and buy low. And we're going to, we're going to dive into all of that here. And it looks like uh, that's a little bit tough for my restream. So we're just gonna do Facebook Live. So for those who are, who are looking at Facebook, um, uh, we're gonna get that going. I think they can go to my Facebook page too, which is. Yeah, Facebook. once it loads up on once it loads up onto uh, to mine, it'll be able to load up onto and then and then Mitch, you can you don't have to reshare it. Okay, as soon as as soon as uh, I think Julie Julie's over there, she's gonna share it. My Facebook yeah. page, if anybody wants to know, is uh, facebook.com forward slash Mitch dot Stephen one. Of course, if you're listening to me, you probably don't need to go there. Mm -hmm. And we've got this. And we're going to go here. And we're going to go here. So thanks, everybody, for your patience here. And so let's go live in three, two, one. All right, Mitch, uh, why don't you kick us off? All right, this is Mitch Steven. I'm here with Brett Schwartz. Um, we're going to learn how to legally break free from uh, capital gain tax and using a tax deferred trust. Uh, the expert here will be Brett, and I was so impressed. I want to make sure we got this out to my followers and maybe recap for people that have been tagging along behind him. Uh, it's very, very a cool concept because uh, 1031 exchanges have their rules and regs and sometimes we need to do something a little bit different uh, as I explained you could do you, you can do a 1031 exchange but you want to sell your properties when they're hot and then it's really hard within the time constraints of a 1031 exchange to find another property to replace the money on uh, in a timely fashion because it's hard to sell something when it's hot and then buy at a discount when it's hot so this this definitely opens up a complete different avenue it has many many advantages um, I don't know why after looking at this, I would ever do a 1031 exchange again in my life. So, um, Brett's going to take us through and show us Did I get all that right, Brett. You, you, you nailed it, you know, Mitch. And, uh, we, uh, 
we are very excited and thankful for the opportunity for for everyone to be in attendance. So this is going to be rapid fire, and we're going to we're going to we're going to put a lot of information. Uh, but we're trying to make it clear and concise, uh, but realize it's also going to be recorded. Okay, and so um, and reach out to Mitch, connect with him first for that recording. Okay, and so we're going to be talking about the three secrets of an optimal timing exit plan. And it's going to be centered around actually a client of mine. I always like to bring it to real life, actual deals for real people, for deals that we've closed. And, and it's actually my client, Dave. And Dave lives in Northern California, and he's bought and sold properties for 30 years. And uh, we helped him save his failed 1031 exchange um, and a 128-unit apartment complex in Georgia and save $1.1 million in tax. And so that's what we're going to be centering the deal around. But before uh, we, we, uh, we get going, I want to... I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to play a little video for you. I had a gentleman um, uh, on my show the other day, and so here we go. You buy stock, and the stock is at this price, and then two years later, the stock is triple the price, and you want to sell it. Are you telling me that you have a way to defer the, the tax situation there? structures and, and, and ideas and maybe you can ch shed some light on it for me too. Yeah, you know, and that's actually what, why we started our company, Capital Gains Tax Solutions, right? Because in the 2008 crash, a lot of my clients, when I was at Marcus and Miller Shop selling uh, highly appreciated, you know, multifamily properties in Northern California, they had felt trapped and pressured and had overpaid via the 1031 exchange. That's the only thing they knew, right? And they thought that was the only tool they could use to defer tax. And then everything stopped. And that was in the 05, 06 market. And then 08 hit. And then they, some of them lost everything. Some of them lost half. And then we found out about a thing called a deferred sales trust, which goes back 25 years now, thousands of closes. It's been through the IRS, but it's proprietary and it's protected. And so uh, we launched our company on that, on basically that premise that there is a better way. Uh, it's an alternative way and it can actually work for not only real estate, but it works for primary homes, it works for business sales, it works for stock. And it's, uh, it's had a, an amazing track record, but even the smartest uh, folks um, either have heard about it or don't quite know about it because they, they think they know, but they don't. So talk to the, talk to us a little bit about um, the idea of, of, of bringing in new innovative ideas and, and what's the process in which you do due diligence on that because the biggest thing we get Kevin is well that must be too good to be true my guys would have already known about it right I have the best of the best right and then right. they go wait well they don't and then they end up joining us once they figure out how we do it, what we do it, and we you know sign the NDAs and everything so but walk us through just your due diligence and how, how you vet different and it could be tax strategies it could be a financial model what is it about making sure that you, you go with the winners and and say no to the uh, the ones that are maybe yeah. risky or too well, dangerous so so we we have you know two full-time lawyers but we use probably five or six other outside law firms for for different uh, advice and things because there's specialized knowledge that we need in the different industries we're in so we need fda counsel sec counsel we can't afford to keep them full-time inside the company but we have you know, really deal making lawyers that are part of the the internal team and, and so they have a, a, a little bit of uh, knowledge in, in some of the tax arenas, but at the end of the day, we also have, um, I don't know how many different accounting firms we use because, you know, again, I don't control all the companies that I'm involved with. So I deal with, you know, dozens of different accounting firms because it, they, when, when we have, I have my own personal accountants, yes, but the, you know, the, the, a public company, my, it has to be a different accountant because my, my, I've had accountants have to resign my personal account because they were taking on a corporate account and things like that. But um, I, 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 I like to run, I mean, I don't do anything without uh, having my, 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 my CPAs and, and my accounting firm take a look at, at the structures. But I mean, what, what, let, me, let me ask you this. I mean, I'm not, I've, I've played with real estate over the years, but I'm, I'm not, you know, I haven't done billions of dollars in real estate, but I have done billions of dollars in product sales. So I am a product marketing guy, but I also, let's talk about public companies and stock. So, cause you mentioned, you started off saying that the capital gains work for real estate. How do you do that when you buy stock and the stock is at this price and then two years later, 
the stock is triple the price and you want to sell it. Are you telling me that you have a way to defer the, the tax situation there? Is that what you're yes, telling Yes, absolutely. Yes. And so the first one I was referring to is a 1031 exchange, which only applies to investment real estate. The second one I'm referring to is called a deferred sales trust. It works for primary homes. It works for investment real estate. It works for highly appreciated public stock. It works for private stock. It works for uh, collectibles, artwork. It works for Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. And it's literally, I think, the best kept secret. And not only that is it's new to people, but it has a track record of thousands of closes now, right? At over 25 five years, 15 times, no change IRS audits. The biggest deal was a $125 million deal. And uh, one of the recent stock sales, I think was for Netflix and it was an over $5 million sale and they were able to defer the tax. And it's really simple actually, Kevin, it's actually just a seller carry back. What you do is you sell the stock to the trust before you ultimately sell it uh, to, to, the, to the ultimate buyer. And what you do is Kevin is you carry a paper, you carry, uh, you become the lender. And so you say, Hey, look, I'm going to finance the trust hundred percent of what the stock was due. Let's say it's a $5 million sale. And he immediately, you get the $5 million buyer to buy it. And that's kind of the simplified version of this. But because we do this, uh, we do it in, in a certain way, you haven't received what's called constructive or actual receipt. And so then you're in a tax deferral state. So, um, yes, it absolutely works for public stock, private stock, it is a proprietary structure, but this is like, it's, we, we believe it's the best kept secret out and it really will change a lot of people's lives because we're looking at the largest wealth transfer in the history of the planet going on right now. And it's with yeah. the baby boomers and it's 17 to $20 trillion that's going to pass with every right. single day, you know, 60, uh, 10,000 baby boomers turning 65 and there's 77 million in the U.S. alone. And, and they're looking for ways out of the toilet to trash liability, out of the highly appreciated stock they've had. Could yeah. you imagine someone buying Apple 25 years ago? And Basically, they're, they're kind of nervous to sell because they're going, I don't want to pay all this tax. I don't want to give all this wealth away uh, yeah. to a government that'll probably waste it away pretty quick. But now we can put it into the trust. Now, once it's there and it's deferred, you can actually use the funds to invest into brand new real estate deals or brand new business deals. We call it the go fund yourself. Yes. Um, instead of having to get venture mind. capital, it, it's kind of like a self-directed IRA. So there's, there's a number of things that go through it. But yeah, the answer is absolutely it works. And we'd love to show you and your tax team how, okay. it, does, how, how it works. Listen, if if you have something that can defer taxes in, in the sale of stock, like you just mentioned, I'm going to introduce you to my top people. Maybe you can become what I call a dream team member of what we do because mm -hmm. we're buying and selling stocks, you know, quite a bit on a weekly basis. All right. So uh, I want to give you that introduction there and I uh, appreciate you watching that video. I know that was a little bit, uh, a little bit long, but um, that's, uh, um, that's a part of what we do. And so, uh, I'm Brett Swartz, and nice to meet you here. I'm the founder of Capital Gains Tax Solutions. As a legal disclaimer, I'm not a CPA nor a tax attorney, and like Kevin said on the video, and like Mitch did with his due diligence, we invite you and strongly encourage you to bring in your trusted advisors to help you make you know, sound structural decisions when it comes to the tax referral strategies you may or may not be using here with this um, uh, presentation. That being said, the perfect storm is facing baby boomers. Uh, I mentioned it in the video, and Mitch, Mitch, how old are you now? I'm just about to turn 60, but don't tell anybody. Okay. All right. So I think, yeah, I think you're, 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 you're I think you're, I'm you're a little close. shy of the baby boomers. Yeah. So you're not quite there, but still the demographics is, is massive. And I know a lot of your, your partners and friends and people that you care about are baby boomers and they have a lot of wealth and these stats are staggering. According to the American Bankers Association, there's literally 17 trillion, and this was done a few years ago, so it's probably upwards of $20 trillion of assets will pass from one generation to the next in the next 20 years. And this is known as the largest wealth transfer in the history of the planet that we know of. Okay, in fact, there's about 77 million baby boomers starting to retire in the US alone. About every day, about 10,000 of them are returning 65. And they have this massive amount of wealth. In fact, according to that same study, 50% of the total wealth in America is high in primary homes, investment real estate, and then private equity or businesses. And they're looking for ways to transfer it to that next generation without getting absolutely wiped out by capital gains tax, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. So that's the first part of the perfect storm is the demographics and the sheer amount of wealth that's going to transfer. Second thing is interest rates in the, in the United States are hovering near 40-year lows, right? Even lower now since COVID-19. And real estate has appreciated a great deal over the years. We're far removed from the 2008 crash. In fact, we're at, we've exceeded those peaks before that crash. 
And a lot of people are kind of holding their breath going, oh, no, what's going to happen now with COVID-19 and the changes, and the potential election and all the other moving things that are going on right now? Plus, you have 1031 exchange timelines, which are always restrictive, very, very challenging to find a quality deal in a short period of time. And then you have low inventory. People want to be in real estate. They want to be investment real estate. They want to be in something that they can feel, touch, control, and get cash flow from. So what happens? Well, what happens when you own a property for a long time and it's greatly appreciated? Well, you become reluctant to sell because of the capital gains tax. And it's somewhere between, I'd say 33 to 50%. It depends on what state you're in. It depends on what kind of asset. It depends on what kind of depreciation um, you've taken from that asset. But literally the clients before they meet us and before Mitch met us, uh, they felt trapped and they felt pressured, right? And they didn't necessarily like their options. And so every single day, high net worth individuals um, like yourself, or maybe if you're a business professional, listen to this episode, um, uh, have people that you serve, they sell businesses, stock, investment, real estate, and they pay hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars in tax when they don't have to, okay? And so I talked about Dave in the beginning, so we're going to center this around Dave so we can give a real-life presentation of someone who's done this. And Dave was in your position just one year ago. One year ago, he's watching and hearing about the Deferred Sales Trust for the first time. And he wanted to be able to, to, to time the real estate market. He's known when it's a seller's market. He's known when it's a buyer's market. He's been in real estate for 30 years. He's bought and sold hundreds of properties, done numerous 1031 exchanges, and he chose the deferred sales trust for the first time. And I asked him why. And he said, he said, Brett, I want it to be able to time the real estate market. I want it to be able to buy commercial real estate when it was more of a buyer's market, when it was more of a lower priced market, instead of overpaying for a highly appreciated property in a highly priced market. He also, part of it too, he's, he's, he's getting, uh, he's a baby boomer and he's getting older and part of it, he wants to go, slow down a little bit. Um, and he didn't want to start over with a new 1031 property. And he also had a 1031 deal that was failing. You see, he had sold, put it with a QI company, a 1031 qualified intermediary, and he was looking for a deal and COVID-19 hit. And the deals he was looking at, he already knew were overpriced. And then COVID-19 hit and it just completely solidified his decision to use the deferred sales trust. So we saved his failed 1031 exchange. This was past his 45 day identification. He did not have to identify the, the deferred sales trust. He was not charged anything until he used the trust and he saved it. And we saved him $1.1 million, deferred $1.1 million. And this is 128 units he owns in Georgia. Okay. And he also wanted to be able to retire from the toilets, trash, and management. So some of you are listening to this and you're saying, you know what? I've been able to build this thing up, but I'm ready to retire and be done with all the toilets, trash, termites. And I want some liquidity. I want some diversification. I want to retire from this. And I would love if I could trust somebody to be able to manage the money and invest it in real estate. And guess who that is? That's Mitch. Okay. Mitch well, has done an amazing job of buying and selling and, and, and uh, homes and he has a fund, as you probably know of, and he has an awesome opportunity for you to, to return on your capital um, um, what you have now through this deferred sales trust, all right? Yeah, let me jump in for here for just a second, Brett. So, yeah. so like, I was so impressed with this, with this tax deferred trust method just because uh, not only could I use it for my own big things, like I maybe want to sell some storages, but I don't want to buy storages right now or I want to have time to find one. But also, I know a lot of people that the baby boomers that are starting to sell their stuff, and they're trying to figure out what they're going to do with their money. I'm saying, look, I think I can save you a ton of money on this deal. Uh, why don't you talk to Brett? And I save them a bunch of money. And then they're so appreciative. Of course, I'm trying to help first. And then maybe if there's a benefit for me second, but then it's a natural, they say, man, you saved me, you know, half a million dollars, a million dollars. Heck yeah. I'm going to loan you some money uh, on your program. Uh, if not, a lot, but he says, I, I at least owe you to do something because you just saved me a fortune that I never would have known about. So I'm, I'm turning on people to this because I have like $26 million worth of private money. And in the more people I help or introduce to this, you know, I get their attention and then maybe, maybe I get elected to help them in their plans going forward. So that's exactly why I'm here. Besides the fact that it's just a little known secret. And I, feel privileged to be able to know you, Brett, and to be able to help share it to people. 
Well, thank you, Mitch. Appreciate that. And we're going to help a lot of people together. And, and by the way, as, as questions come up, go in the comments and post your questions in Facebook. Also in the Zoom video, as a reminder, we're going to get to all those questions, okay? So, so this is Dave. Um, by the way, he, he plans to keep the funds invested into a conservative portfolio of liquid investments. You can put it into stocks, bonds, mutual funds. But he actually has recently sent some of the funds to a multifamily um, opportunity fund to buy real estate at a discount over the next 6, 12, 24 months. But the key is he's not having to do it all himself. And he's not having to take all the debt himself, which we're going to go into right now. So by the way, who is this presentation for? Okay. So this is for anyone who is a business professional who helps highly appreciated uh, uh, clients or high, high net worth clients. Or if you're a high net worth client who owns a business, it could be a private practice. You could be a dentist, a veterinarian, an optometrist. You could, be a, you could, do a, you could run a car dealership. Um, you own investment real estate. You own a high-end primary home. Um, you have other assets that are subject to capital gains tax, stock, public, or private. Uh, he also works for cryptocurrency. But here's the key. It needs to be worth at least about a million dollars net of all debt, okay? And the asset has to have at least about $500,000 of gain. So if you have those two things, then we would say we're probably a really good option for you. If it's lower than that, it's too small, and our, our fees eat it up. So I just want to set that up front. Before you invest your time and energy in this presentation, realize that it does need to be a larger deal and does need to have substantial gain, okay? Um, but what is a deferred sales trust? We've been saying this deferred sales trust thing. Well, it's just an installment sale, okay? What's an installment sale? Well, it's a way where you can sell, you can sell something and you can carry paper. You can become the lender. And when you do that, you're in a deferral state for the tax until you receive the payments. It's known as IRC 453, which is, goes back to the 1920s. But at the essence of the deferred sales trust, it's just a, a specialized installment sale, okay? And why would you need one for your wealth plan? Well, I want you to think about two things throughout this presentation. There's kind of the old way of doing things, and then there's the new way. Mitch, do you remember going to Blockbuster for the first time, maybe 15, 20 years ago, and finding that video? And it was fun, right? You pull into the parking lot, you show up, you walk in, and, and there's something about seeing those videos and being able to make sure it's, you know, they're actually there. And then you get your video, and you go home, and you watch it. Um, but do you remember when it became really popular, and now there's more people, and the Blockbuster would be sold out of videos sometimes? or you forgot to return it within three days and they hit you with a little penalty, or you forgot to rewind it and they hit you with a little penalty. Well, that's kind of like the 1031 exchange. It's one of those things where you go, why do they make these 45 days? Why don't they make it uh, 360 days, right? Why do I have to be forced in this small little time frame to, to make these huge financial decisions? And, and essentially it's like swimming in what's called like a red ocean. A red ocean is where all the sharks are feeding, there's blood in the, blood in the water, and everyone's just trying to, to get that one deal, and you're having to feel this pressure and this pain. And oftentimes, you, you, you put yourself, or the deal puts yourself in a position where you're having to overpay for a property, okay? And you don't like that, we don't like that, our clients don't like that, I and mean, that's like the 1031, it's the old way of doing things. Um, and also, you have an old depreciation schedule, well, what if there's a new way, Mitch? What if the new way was like a Netflix where on demand you can watch any video, you're never sold out, you don't have to return it within three days. Now there's some ongoing fees you have to pay every month, right? But it's a seamless way of doing things. You can go into any product type at any time. You can get a brand new depreciation schedule. Um, you don't have to be active in real estate. You can be passive. You can also be out of debt. You know, what if there was a new way, Mitch? Would that be attractive? Absolutely. I'm here. Right. I'm in. So let's dive into the 1031 exchange a little bit more, right? The biggest thing is we talked about the timing deadlines. You have to identify something within 45 days and close within 180 days. Mitch, our parents taught us to sell high and buy low. Is that right? That's right. And the 1031 exchange is the worst when it comes to trying to accomplish this. And we call it the red ocean. It's where all the sharks are feeding. It's where you're competing and getting outpaced by deals and you're overpaying in low inventory. And you're going, I know it's a seller's market. That's why I sold. But now it's a buyer. Now I have to try to buy in the same marketplace. Like, oh, I, I don't, and take on all this debt. And by the way, equal or greater value is what you have to do, which also often means equal or greater debt. Debt is not your friend in a highly appreciated overpriced market. Debt's your friend when it's a low price market, right? And there's deals and there's low price per square foot right? And there's value add opportunities. That's when debt's your friend. So you want to be smart with your debt. 
Um, you don't want to take on dumb debt is what we call it by overpaying for properties in a short time period. Okay. Number two, your depreciation schedule travels. Guess what, Mitch? One of the best reasons to own real estate is for the depreciation to offset the cash flow. Well, if you're fully depreciated on properties, by the way, 27 and a half years for multifamily. Okay. Uh, 39 years for commercial, you lose one of the top benefits of owning real estate. So the intent is to get a new depreciation schedule. The problem is if you do a 1031, your old schedule travels with you. It's like that, it's like that old, old suitcase that all the stuff's falling out. It's already all fall. You want to put a brand new suitcase with a brand new depreciation schedule. So when you travel, uh, you can offset that, that cash flow. So that's really important. That's what the deferred sales trust offers. And the last one is the whole entity must move with the 1031, meaning if you wanted to 1031 into Mitch's uh, fund or into a deal that Mitch owned, it's, it's like beyond complicated. Um, in fact, most of the syndicators and operators we work with, they don't even allow 1031s. They just say, hey, look, pay your tax. It's too complicated because the whole entity must move, right? Which the deferred sales trust is the opposite. It doesn't have to move. It can just be, it can be into the trust and then it can be sent to a new investment opportunity like Mitch's deal or stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, which leads to the last point, which is, the 1031 lacks diversification and liquidity. You're typically trading your entire net worth or a big part of it, and you're moving into one other deal. And yeah, you may get some more tenants. You might trade 20 units for 40 units or 40 for 100, but you're probably in the same city, the same town with the same lender and the same loan, you know, potentially full recourse. Be very careful now. Lo loans are becoming more and more um, uh, 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 risky for you to take on if they're, if they're requiring full recourse. So you want diversification and liquidity is what we found and the 1031 is not friendly to that, okay? And so as a quick background, I started at a company in my beginning of my career. I was just a really young guy in 2006 at a company called Marcus and Millichap, helping people sell investment real estate. And it's one of the largest firms in the nation specializing in real estate investment services. And I've sold uh, close to $100 million of multifamily retail office land, senior housing. I absolutely love commercial real estate. I actually grew up in the, in the Bay Area helping my dad build custom homes. And I've been in the real estate business my whole life. Um, that's where I learned how to work hard, be an entrepreneur. And my brother and I would spend our summers helping my dad build houses, okay? Um, and I've also closed countless 1031 exchanges. Don't get me wrong, I do believe 1031 has its place, but it's important to make sure it's on your terms and your timing. And I've also done what's called Delaware Statutory Trust, not to be confused with the Diverge Sales Trust we're talking about. They're both DSTs, but they're different, okay? A Delaware is just another form of a 1031. Um, I also have my, I, I have my Series 22 and 63 license, um, and I'm actually foregoing those because of the Deferred Sales Trust, and I'm allowing other financial advisors to manage money. So I don't actually manage the money. I'm actually the trustee in this scenario, which we'll talk about here in a minute. I've been featured on Mitch's podcast and a bunch of others across the web. You can look them up. And then again, this is Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank. He sits next to Mark Cuban, and they make deals on the big show there. And I've been on their podcast, and I'm hoping to do a deal with Kevin. We'll see. He's looking at us right now. But I'm working on a deal with um, uh, uh, with uh, with Seth as well. And we're trying to work on another one with Seth as well for one of his clients that are looking at us as well. Um, but that being said, it wasn't always easy, Mitch. Do you remember when you first started your career? And you weren't probably this guy on the end of the phone, Leonardo DiCaprio. You are probably one of the guys in the back, right, Mitch, trying to figure out how they're doing it? Yeah, I was down in the hole. <laughs> Yeah, and so that's I was one of the guys in the back just trying to scratch my head like how are these guys at Marcus and Millichap selling all this real estate for all this money and making the value? And, you know, I always believed in myself that I could do it, um, but it was hard, you know. I was new in the business. I was just married. And I don't know if you've ever been so scared, Mitch, where you don't have a lot of money coming in and you're not sure how you're going to support your family. And you have this big dream, this big vision, but but you're just barely making it. Well, that's where I was in 2006 to, to, uh, to about 2011. And to make matters worse, when I just started to get some momentum in my business, my cousin was making big checks. $98,000 check, Mitch, he made for a deal. And my manager believed in me. He said, Brett, someday you're going to make a deal like this. But it wasn't easy. I was scared. I didn't know what I was doing. I was barely learning uh, enough to just keep it going. I was making next to $25,000 a year, $10,000 a year. But I had a dream, and I kept going. And I started to get some momentum. But all of a sudden, something happened. It was in 2008, Mitch. The crash happened, and when the crash happened, I went from making just a little bit of money to like zero overnight, okay? And people said, go get a real job. What are you doing? At the same time, my clients were also facing this crisis. They were going from these multi-million dollar properties to either half of their wealth being cut in half or being having to fight with the banks, okay? 
and they were in a big challenge. And so I was just trying to make it. And this is one of the deals I sold in Northern California as a broker. Okay. hundred percent commission. You only make money if you close, but check it out, Mitch, would you buy this deal? $129,000 for seven units. Okay. But my commission after tax, you know, before tax was $1,900. And so my wife at home trying to support my, my, my first daughter, I was scared. I was frustrated. I remember breaking down crying in my manager's office because the emotion just hit me. I'm going, I'm doing everything. I came from a sports background, played basketball in college, had two degrees in a minor, was very successful in high school and college kind of thing, right? To go into making next to nothing and being scared and trying to support my family. And this was hard. So I had to figure out something else. So I did what every good entrepreneur does, Mitch. And what do you do? You figure out a way to win, right? You figure out a way to, to keep going forward. So I got a side hustle job at Cheesecake Factory. And this is my actual restaurant that I worked at in Roseville, Sacramento. This is my manager right here with a tie. Now, that's not me in the background, but I would, but, but I would be making calls at Marcus and Milchap by day, you know, and, uh, you know, 50 to 100 calls a day, trying to go on meetings. And so the 7 a.m. to about 5 to 6, I'd be working at Marcus and Milchap. I immediately would drive over to Cheesecake Factory and work there to try to support my family and keep my dream alive. And so the manager told me, he said, Brett, you need to give me two years because I don't want you to close a deal in 30 days and just leave after I do all this training. So no matter what, if, how many deals you close in the next two years, you're going to stay here. I said, I commit to that. I will do that. And that's exactly what I did. And two years plus a day, I walked away and I fulfilled my commitment to him. But it was a great humbling experience. But it was also, it instilled in me a passion to figure out a way to make it in the business. So along the way, my manager brought in a gentleman from, uh, who's now my business partner who spoke on the Deferred Sales Trust. And it was like a light bulb went off in my head. And he basically walked through how this new way of deferring tax would allow our clients to escape what they just went through. Okay. And so I said, I've got to roll this out. I'm going, look, you're a year and a half too late because the market's already crashed and their values are gone. But okay, let me learn about this. So I started to implement it. I started to learn about it. And I started to tell my clients about it. I started to add value first, Mitch, like you talked about. And my business started to grow. And fast forward 10 years later, um, I now train and coach brokers, realtors, financial advisors on the Deferred Sales Trust, commercial real estate syndicators, operators, and five kids. My wife and I have been married over 11 years, celebrating on Saturday. And we have four daughters and one son. And I speak and educate everyone as much as I can on this strategy. But enough about me. I want to walk you through. The reason I told you that is because it took me 10 years to discover the hard way to do this. But how many of you want to learn the easy way? And please, again, comments, like, shares in, the, in, the, in Facebook. If you're listening to this on Facebook, that really helps us. And tag somebody this could help with, whether it be a business professional or whether it would be a, uh, someone you know who's going, about, who's going to sell something that's highly appreciated. But I'm going to give you the easy way, okay? By the way, if you've been struggling, this is probably why. Not only the perfect storm, which we talked about, but it's not your fault, Mitch. Your CPA didn't tell you about it. He didn't nope. know, Mitch. I didn't know 10 years ago. I right? told and my that, CPA about it. Yeah, you told your CPA about it, right? And he comes on, right? He didn't know, but once he met our, the CPA who created it and tax attorney who created it, and we walked through, okay, here we go, right? So commercial real estate brokers, by the way, I'm a commercial real estate broker. Hi, I'm Brett, commercial real estate broker. I make big commissions when you buy and sell property with me, but hopefully I put you in a great deal and you also make money. But guess what? They don't want you to know about it. Why? because they want to keep you in the 1031 exchange. Why? Because they get big commissions every time you buy and sell real estate, right? By the way, that's also why the 1031 exchange companies don't want you to know about it. They get money when you're, when you're in a 1031 exchange. That's their product. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, but you re realize that there's a better way. And especially if you want to gain freedom from capital gains tax, and you don't want to just kick down the road the tax and stay in a simple uh, or stay in a, a single transaction type of deal, but you want liquidity, diversification. So if you, if you tried to do a 1031 exchange, you've no doubt felt pressured and trapped under 180 days. By the way, the 1031 only applies to investment real estate. Doesn't apply to primary homes. Doesn't apply to uh, stocks, bonds, mutual funds. Um, uh, we really just do stocks. We wouldn't really defer mutual funds, but still in that sense, it doesn't defer capital gains tax there. Also, it doesn't really work for businesses, although you can technically do it for a business. It's just I've never seen somebody sell a veterinarian practice in 1031 into another veterinarian practice. They typically sell and get out. And so it's very, very restrictive. But 
you want freedom. We want to give you freedom. And so that's what we're going to show you here. So this is the hard way. The hard way is AKA the 1031 exchange, what we've been forced to do. Hire a broker, five to 6% commission, sell a property, another half percent closing costs, hire attorneys to review documents, a thousand, hire a 1031 qualified intermediary. You see how the ocean's becoming red and there's a lot of sharks around here, Mitch. Okay. Hire an attorney to draft new LLC, identify three properties within 45 days. The pressure builds, have to close within 180 days, obtain a loan, right? Loans are getting harder to do, uh, harder to, to obtain. Buy the property. Hopefully you didn't overpay for the property. Take on more debt. Hopefully it's non-recourse. Okay, you're feeling more pressure. Your upfront cost could be hundreds of thousands of dollars per deal depending on the sale of the, sale of the deal. And the time to do this is just six months to sell your property and then to buy another property. So all of this leads to what? Hiring new management, new leases, new utilities, new rent control laws, which are an absolute nightmare here in California. And they're talking about taking away the uh, Prop 13 or limiting that for the taxes, which is going to be another nightmare. Uh, new collections, new evictions. It's just endless. At a certain point, don't you want to just be retired from this and maybe just take a little bit off of your plate? That's what we're, we're going to walk you through in the next 30 minutes. So I'm going to walk you through how to build an entire optimal timing wealth and exit plan live in the next 30 minutes. So there's really three secrets, okay, to an optimal timing transformational exit plan. Secret number one is selling and deferring hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars in capital gains tax. How to legally break free from capital gains tax and find freedom to buy and sell your business or property without ever worrying about a 1031 exchange ever again. Secret number two, optimal timing transformational wealth plan cloning. We're going to show you how to clone a proven wealth plan with capital gains tax solutions in our trusted advisors in less than five hours. That's all we need is five hours of your time and have more time, energy, and debt freedom without giving up control or protection of your cash. Okay. And secret number three, my number one wealth building hack, how to get your deferred sales trust to work in your favor and become an investment rather than an expense. So let's dive into secret number one. Uh, my 1031 exchange hacking, how to legally break free from capital gains tax to find freedom to buy and sell your business or property without ever worrying about a 1031 exchange ever again. All right. So remember, this is Joe. He wants to sell. He feels trapped, right? What is he trapped by? Well, the 30 to 50% capital gains tax. And then it hurts. He gets frustrated because he has to overpay for property. And this is too often the people's story. They want to retire, be out of debt, have a passive income stream. And they don't want to start over and do the whole process all over again. Okay. And so what's step number one to getting out of this? Well, first of all, is just determine your tax liability. So Mitch, let's say you're selling a property for a million dollars. You've owned it for 27 and a half years and it has a zero basis. Well, guess what? In California, you're probably looking at 40%. That would be about a $400,000 tax. So we'll just clarify that. Second, we want to it help you envision your ideal wealth plan, right? And you're going to just say, where do you want your time, your energy, as well as your wealth? Do you want it diversified? Do you want it liquid? Do you want the chance to get a new property at any time, right? And envision what this looks like as far as your estate and your wealth and your overall lifestyle, okay? Step number two, we were going to look at a side-by-side -side comparison of a deferred sales trust versus a 1031 or versus a Delaware statutory trust, whatever. We're going to draw a line down the middle of a page, Mitch, and we're going to put the pros and cons. On one side, you're going to probably say, do I want any time to buy real estate or do I want restricted time? Do I want a new depreciation or do I want old depreciation? Do I want to have to take on debt or can I, do I want to be out of debt completely? Do I want to be able to be passive or do I have to be active? And we're going to go down this whole line and look at what, how does that help you line up to your wealth plan? Very simple. Step number three, you're going to talk with clients who've actually used the deferred sales trust. Find out their story, why they used it. Are, they being, are we able to do what we've, we've said we're going to do, right? Uh, what's our performance? How's that going? Step number four is just fund your deferred sales trust. The funds can be held at TD Ameritrade, the largest bank in the world. The funds never move without your signature and they can be invested in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds until you find a real estate deal and or a big, a big percentage of them can go again to someone like Mitch who would do an amazing job making a great return on your money. So again, this is what Dave did. Dave sold. He also, he already placed $2 million with the multi-family private opportunity fund and he's looking at another real estate deal but basically he's waiting, waiting to time the market. Okay. So how does this all work here? Here we go. I'm glad you asked Mitch. Let's do a deal uh, that you actually own right now and we'll do that as the sample. Okay. So give me a deal that a commercial real estate property you own and what did you buy it for? I have a, a storage facility, self storage facility. I bought in 1991. It's worth uh, about 2.5 million. And uh, I've, you know, I added on to it over the years. 
um, built it up on a corner lot. Populations moved to it. Um, you know, I didn't pay. I can't tell you exactly what I paid for it, but I didn't. I, I didn't pay. I, maybe I got eight eight hundred thousand in it. You know. Okay. Yeah, eight hundred with the capital improvements. Probably that's where you're at right now, right? But mm -hmm. you've owned it. But you've owned it since nineteen ninety one. So I, I imagine it's been fully depreciated, right? Pretty close. Yeah. So what's he, we're gonna put? We're gonna put. He bought it for eight hundred, but it's fully depreciated to zero. So he has what's called a two point five million dollar gain. Now it's in the great state of Texas. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. Probably the San Antonio area, I imagine. San Antonio? Yeah. Well, actually, Canyon Lake, but yeah. Okay. We're gonna use. We're gonna use. Um, 20 for federal, 3 to 8.3.8% for Obamacare, plus another, we're going to use another 5% for, um, to keep it simple, for depreciation recapture. So we're going to use 30%, okay? Is that fair? Okay. Yeah. All right. So $750,000 is the liability, all right? All right. So, Mitch, do you want to pay that seven fifty, or do you want to defer it? I want to defer it. Okay. So here's what we do. Well, Mitch, guess what? If you were to sell directly from the buyer to you directly, and he gave you all $2.5 million, how much money did you receive if you did that tomorrow? Well, the difference between 2.5 and 800. So no, 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 that... no, no. He gave you all 2.5. He just gave you 2.5. So you received 2.5, right? Don't even think about the 800. He just gave you a check. He gave you cash, 2.5 million. How much did you take in your hands? It's a simple question. 2.5, right? 2.5, yeah. You got it. So that would trigger the 750, right, Mitch? Yes. Okay, so we don't want to do that, right? We want to keep that deferred. So the how, how we do that is we actually introduce this trust. And this is the cool part, right? So we're going to, he's going to sell it for 2.5, but we've got this cash buyer. Remember, he's ready to go with 2.5. But instead of doing that directly, we're just going to sell it to the trust first, right before close of escrow. So we get him lined up, he's ready to go. And so, Mitch, if the trust buys it for 2.5, and turns around and sells it for 2.5, how much gain does the trust have? Zero. So how much tax does the trust owe on zero? Zero. Okay. Now, what if, what if he gave you a promissory note for 2.5, meaning you, don't get, you got zero cash. He gave you a zero down payment and a promissory note. So you, you became the lender here for 2.5 million. How much tax do you owe on zero if you receive zero today? Zero. Okay. Now, this 750 is in a deferral state. You follow? Yes. Okay. So that's as simple as that. We're just going to sell these assets to this trust, third-party trustee. That's our role at Capital Gains Tax Solutions. So we're actually going to buy the assets through a brand new trust. We can call it San Antonio Deferred Sales Trust. The trust is simply going to buy right before close of escrow through an assignment of sale. The, the, uh, Mitch is going to assign all of the rights and all of the uh, ownership to the trust in exchange for a promissory note of $2.5 million. Okay. Now, we're going to structure the note as 8%. Typically, is what we structure it at. It's net of all fees over 10 years, Mitch. Okay. And the payout could be zero to start, or it could be 5%. It could be 10%, whatever you want. But you're a high income earner, so I might, I might imagine it might be 0%. And this is going to be compounding over the 10 years. Okay. So you got $750,000 that you would have paid in tax that's compounding at eight. Okay, that's owed to you over 10 years. Now, Mitch, when would you like to pay that, that $750 back to the government? How soon would you like to do that? Um, after I'm dead, or maybe okay. not even then. Yeah, well, maybe your kids would like to, to keep going, right? Maybe, do your kids want to pay it, or what do you think they want to do? Defer, 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 die. You got it. So every 10 years, Mitch, you can renew for another 10 years and then just keep doing that. And then it can pass inside what's called your living trust. Okay. And your kids can step into your shoes. You can have it go, let's say you had four kids. You got one, two, three, four. That income stream. The income stream could be adjusted from zero to 5% to 10%, whatever you want. But the cool thing is this 750 is still deferred. Now, you're going to pay tax on whatever you receive in that given year, right? But that's okay because that's fine. But in the meantime, we have an extra 750 working for us. You follow, Mitch? Yep. Okay. So, um, again, for those who are listening, we sold the assets to the trust right before close of escrow, who turned around and sold it for the same price 
So they have a zero gain. They have zero tax. The cash goes into the trust. It's held at Bank of New York Mellon, Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade. The funds only move with Mitch's signature, and they can be invested in stocks, bonds, mutual funds. But even better, Mitch, I have a feeling that a lot of your listeners are real estate folks like me and you. Is that right? A lot, yes. Okay. So let's say there's an apartment complex, Mitch, that used to be worth $10 bucks today. And instead of 1031 exchanging, let's say in a couple years, it's worth $7.5 million. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Yes. Well, guess what you can do, Mitch, with this $2.5 million? Let's say we kept it safe and conservative and it's earning a small interest. Let's just say it grows to uh, you know, $2.8 million at that point. Okay. Yes. Now, what can you do? Well, you can form an LLC, Mitch. And 80% of these funds can be put into this LLC. So let me, I'm going to use 2.8. Okay. 80%. So that's 2.2 million. We'll use a simple number there. Now, Mitch, you can put a down payment onto this. Let's let's say this was 100 units, okay? Apartment complex. You can use this as a down payment. This LLC is going to be Mitch as the managing member, and the trust is going to be a 20% owner at an 8% preferred return. Mitch, you're an 80% owner. But Mitch, you put up zero dollars. We do what's called a JV partnership. By doing it in this way, Mitch, you're able to buy at a discount. You're able to get a new depreciation schedule. And you're able to control, own, manage the same way you would have. Now, you've got to pay back the trust, right? and the 8% preferred return. Well, guess what, Mitch? Do you notice how this 8 mirrors this 8? Because what? Once we pay it back, it's got to turn around and pay who? You. Yeah. So it's kind of like borrowing from yourself, but you're actually not technically borrowing from yourself because that would be taxable, Mitch, so we don't want to do that. But we do want to do it this way. It's a silent JV partnership. Any questions there, Mitch? No, sir. But you've never rode this bike before, Mitch, and so that's a little wobbly, right? That's a lot of moving parts, a lot of arrows. We get it. That's why we've done thousands of these, and we, we are the experts, and we're going to walk you through, and we're going to show you all the legal part of this here more in a minute. But realize that you're in good hands, and, and the first time you ride this bike, a little wobbly, but the second time you ride the bike, and the third time, all of a sudden, guess what? You're going to be racing down San Antonio. What's, what's the fastest road in San Antonio, Mitch? The fastest road? <laughs> yeah, is it a freeway? Do you, yeah. I don't know, 281 South, I guess. 281 South. Then at a certain point, do you, do you see, Mitch, how you can become an expert in this and you can help people do it? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you actually you probably do more complex stuff with the lease options and different things. But the point is, we're, gonna, we're, we're, we're experts in this. We're going to help you do that. All right. So that being said, we're going we're to keep moving on here. So remember, who does this work for? Primary homeowner. The home needs to be worth at least $1.5 million or more, okay, because you have what's called the 121 exclusion. A business owner. We've done car dealerships, tech entrepreneurs, dentists, veterinarians, optometrists. It works for collectibles, artwork, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. It works for investment real estate. It can be an S-Corp, C-Corp, LLC. You can be a real estate developer, a commercial real estate syndicator. So, Mitch, it works for all types of high net worth clients. You follow? Yeah, can, can it work for a for, uh, uh, uh extraordinarily high commissions that are due in the future? Yes, if it's properly structured and depending on how, if they haven't actually constructively received it yet, okay? okay. So, so yes, huge commissions, okay? Big deals, get with us early, okay? And it all depends on, on, on the way that's been structured, okay? So um, it's a possibility. By the way, here's a quick deal I did in Sacramento. We sold the property for 270000 a unit. So Mitch, these are flat roofs. It's a couple twos, threes, average rent, 1400 bucks, 270,000 a unit. Okay, this is Steve, my client, John, my client. And guess what? They were going to do a 1031, but they're looking at these cap rates, Mitch, and this is before the crash of, of COVID. And they're going, oh my gosh, 4.3 cap in California, taking on all this massive debt. They're like, Brett, tell me about that deferred sales trust again. So for the first time ever, Steve, who grew up in a family, they have about $30 million of, of apartment complexes in Napa. Have you ever been to Napa with all the good wine there, Mitch? Yes, I have. Well, could you imagine how much those rents are in that area? Yes. Okay, so they own a bunch of apartments. So he used the Deferred Sales Trust for the first time. Really happy that he did, especially given COVID-19. Um, this is a tr another client of mine. He's a transactional attorney in the Nevada area, and he helps structure deals, but he did it for his own deal. 
He sold a business and he used it for the first sales trust for his business. By the way, these are a few other recent and live deals. Um, the largest one ever was 125 million, a commercial real estate sale in San Diego, which was audited by the IRS. They know who we are, okay? And it was a no change audit, not one single issue. The biggest primary home was a $26 million home. This couple was getting a divorce, they needed to sell, and they um, were looked at a $6 million capital gains tax liability. Instead of paying that, Mitch, they used a deferred sales trust. They had no 1031 option. How happy are they, Mitch? I mean, they got to be ecstatic. They got to be about 6 million reasons to be ecstatic, right? And they're earning interest on that as we speak, and they're living off of that interest. Amazing, right? A car dealership, this is one of the biggest car dealerships my partner did in Central California. Um, and then another real estate business sale. Um, uh, here's a few other ones that are, that are under contract. Okay. So this is a deal that I closed recently in Cupertino. Cupertino is about, uh, is this, is where Apple headquarters are at. So she lived there for, uh, I don't know, over a decade and the value of her house went from very low to about 3.1 million. So she used the deferred sales trust for the first time. Very smart, sophisticated, tough engineer at Google, Mitch. She, she, she never heard of this. She owns multifamily properties. And she's like, was this too good to be true? Does this work? She asked every single time. She's the, one of the toughest deals, but I'm glad she asked it because it made me be a better uh, consultant. But she used the deal. We saved her about $400,000 of capital gains tax. 121 exclusion. She had the 250 because she was single, but above that, she owed about 400000 And this is where we come in. We bridge that additional gap there, okay? So hopefully you're catching here that we, what we're offering here is more than just a strategy. It's actually a transformation opportunity for your wealth and for exit planning. Because not only, Mitch, are you, can you be debt-free, but you can be tax-deferred, but then you can diversify your wealth into multiple product types and locations. It could be stocks, bonds, mutual funds. It could be hard money lending. It could be into Mitch's business. It could be into real estate of your own or with partners. Your wealth can be liquid. You have time to enjoy wealth. No more toilets, trash, liability. If you've never want to worry about that ever again. And then you also have the opportunity to grow wealth at optimal timing, Mitch. If you can imagine selling in 06 and buying in 2011, if you sold everything, Mitch, you had in 06 and waited till 2011, the bottom of the market, right? Wouldn't that be amazing if you, if you had that, would call it's called the Monday morning quarterback, right? Now, none of us have that. However, one gentleman, Deferred Sales Trust, one of the best stories ever, we call it the Monday morning quarterback. He sold his property in Minnesota for um, over 20 million in 2006 and he's looking around for the 1031 and he's going whoa whoa whoa, that's dangerous i don't want to go over there so instead of paying the tax though he used the deferred sales trust five years later guess what mitch that property happened when that property was foreclosed on guess who the bank called first them he called him right because he was the previous owner and they're like hey you sold that property five years ago do you want to pay, pay it back he said well maybe what, what's the price and he said how about how about 40 percent less than what you sold it for he said, okay, that sounds like a pretty good deal. So he sold high and he bought low. He, taught, he did what our parents taught us to do, but not in a 1031. He did it with a deferred sales trust, all tax deferred. So it is possible to do this. That was over, um, that was a long time ago, okay? Yeah, so, but it gave time for the cycle to happen. You know, I mean, you don't have that in 1031, so. Yeah, you want to harvest when it's time to harvest. You want to sell when it's time to sell. You want to buy when it's time to buy. Right. So by the way, how do we know this is legal? This is the number, biggest question you should be asking. How do I know your funds are protected? Well, glad you asked. Step number one, track record. Understand that there's thousands of closes now and over 15 no change IRS audits, not one single issue, tens of thousands of tax returns for these trusts. Okay. Um, billions under management. Okay. It's proprietary. It's protected. We work, um, um, on, on a con contingent basis, but that is the track record. Okay. By the way, if anyone brings you a new tax deferral strategy, you want to ask a number of questions, not only how long you've been doing it, but, uh, and how many have closed, but, uh, how many IRS audits have you survived? But more than that, how many of your actual clients, and this is the tax attorney who provides audit defense, by the way, lifetime audit defense. How many of the, of the tax attorney who's providing this surgery, how many patients have died on the surgery table? Or how many patients have gone to jail? How many of these IRS audits, what was the outcome? And are you, is that tax attorney going to defend? And that's what we have in what, what, what I believe uh, and, and have found to be one of the smartest tax professionals um, and uh, brilliant at what he does. And he 
is uh, batting a thousand against the IRS. And that is the confidence that we have with the deferred sales trust over the 25 years. Okay. So make sure you are protected. All right. Number two, though, is audit defense. In case you do get audited, who's going to pay for it? Well, what's beautiful about the deferred sales trust, audit defense is built into every single deal for the lifetime audit of it. No additional charge for you, state or federal, for the audit protection. Okay. Also, indemnification. The, the tax attorneys indemnify, uh, which is important as well. Um, direct access control agreement. Mitch, do you want your funds to be able to be moved by without your signature? No. So we have what's called direct access control agreement, meaning the funds only move with your signature. So there's a third party trustee. That's me, right? Uh, Mitch is the lender. He's the secured lender. Um, third party trustee. That's me. We are the, uh, uh, beneficiary and owners of the trust, but we owe hundred percent of the money to Mitch and Mitch is the lender, but he has all the rights and protections of a lender. The funds don't move without his signature. So he can literally pay the tax, and then walk into the bank. It's a multi-billion dollar bank we use to provide this and the funds don't move without a signature or he can use the deferred sales trust and they don't move without a signature. So it's the exact same protections. That's very important. So how are we doing, Mitch? You feeling good? I'm feeling good. All right. These last two secrets are going to be faster. I promise. Um, secret number two, deferred sales trust, optimal timing, transformational exit plan. Hey, let's just clone what works, right? We don't have to recreate the wheel. Just get with us, bring your, bring in your, your, your trusted advisors, we'll get with Mitch and let's, let's map out an, a, a way to actually manage these funds. Okay. And the key is we can do this in just a few hours and you're going to get more time, more wealth, more energy, more debt freedom without giving up control or protection of your cash. And this is the plan, Mitch. It's really simple. Sell your real estate, fund your deferred sales trust, invest at optimal timing. And when is that Mitch? I don't know, but it's at your leisure. Yeah, it's at any time, my friend, whenever you want to, okay? At your leisure. When you say go, we go. When you say stop, we stop, okay? Move, and then step number one, we're just gonna map out a wealth plan with myself, with your trusted advisors, okay? And it's gonna be an allocation. It's gonna be based upon your risk tolerance for how and where the funds are invested. You do a two-page questionnaire, and then the funds are held at like TD Ameritrade. You have 24-7 access to view the funds. Um, so we're going to map that out. Okay. Step number two, we're going to sell your asset. Step number three, fund your deferred sales trust. Step number four, enjoy your wealth. Remember they're 10 year deferred sales trust notes. 8% is the earning target, not guaranteed net of all recurring fees, not guaranteed, but you can renew every 10 years for as long as you want and you can cash out whenever you want and just pay the tax. So again, what we used to have to do, we used to have to stay in our primary home, not sell our business overpay for a 1031 property, took up more time, more energy, more toilets, trash, tenants, employees, liability, headaches. We used to have to become the lender for a single buyer. But what if I want my collateral to be multiple asset types and move it into new deals? I'm not just tied to that one single person. Well, again, IRC 453, seller carryback is what we're doing, but we're doing a special one, which gives you all of that freedom. Okay. We used to have to stay in debt. Time and energy stress, pay the tax. Nobody wants to do that. So that's a new way. It's a better way. So who here thinks the deferred sales trust is amazing, is awesome, is transformational for you or someone you know? If you do, please put it in the comments. Please put questions in there. Please give us encouragement. We really appreciate that. So that's secret number two. We have questions, so I just want to let you know. That's what I'm, they're hitting me from all different angles. So Okay, well, and I promise we're going to get to that. And I think we're going to answer a lot of this in a minute. And then we're going to go back through every single one of your questions, okay? Right. So how to get your deferred sales trust to, be, to work in your favor and become an investment rather than an expense. This is secret number three, my number one wealth building hack. This has to be a win for you. Your investment in us and partnering with us and with you to help give, it, give us an opportunity to serve you with the deferred sales trust, it has to be a winner for you. It has to be an investment. It cannot be a huge expense for you. We start with obviously the tax liability has to be large enough. Our, that's why we have our minimums. But then from there, there's other ways to do this. So this is actually a client of mine. His name is Peter. Peter's a baby boomer and Mitch, he's driving two to three days a week to an apartment complex in Sacramento from Marin, California, battling traffic, banging on doors, trying to, trying to collect rents. It's just a headache for him. He's hired management. It's a headache. And he's just going, Brad, I'm just ready to be done with this. I don't need any more wealth. I just need to protect it 
diversify it and get out of all the time and energy that's being pulled from these properties. So what he do? Well, he sold his multifamily property complex. He actually sold it for 1.8 million and he put 1.3 million into the trust. But what was he battling against? Well, he was up against $500,000 of debt and he was up against $550,000 of taxes that he needed to defer. So I said, Peter, why did you choose it? The deferred sales trust over your 1031, because by the way, he's a real estate broker for 30 years. He goes, Brett, those 18 units represented 18 problems. Okay. And I didn't want to trade 18 problems for 36 problems. I've already got 18 problems. I actually want zero problems. I don't want to trade for more toilets, more trash, more liability. So he says, Brett, it's a relief to be rid of the apartment building. It, it was a very lucrative investment, but it came with a lot of headaches that took up my time and my energy. He wants time. Time is transformational. When you can get more time and your energy back, that's transformational. Money is just money. That's temporary, okay? But you can't get your time back. So this is why he chose the Deferred Sales Trust. You can hear him on my podcast, Capital Gains Tax Solutions, and go to our website to learn more about that story, okay? But how do we make an investment for you, Mitch, rather than an expense or for Peter? Well, check out these tax brackets. Depending on where you live and depending on your income, you're in a high tax bracket. But what if we can sell that asset that's producing all this cash flow that you're paying tax on. And what if we could not take any cash flow from the trust and let it just compound and therefore lower your overall net income tax? Well, guess what? It's exactly what we can do. The trust doesn't have to pay you, Mitch. It can just be compounding. So let's say your, your self storage is producing. Let's imagine Mitch, you were making 440,000 a year and your self storage was making 200,000. Well, if you sell that self storage and move into the deferred sales trust, and you just say, I don't want that 200, just let it compound. Let's put it in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or other investments and let it just build on itself. Guess what your tax bracket would do, Mitch? It would drop to 240. Well, in this scenario, what would that do for your savings on an income per year? Income tax savings. So that's about $70,000 of savings. Have you seen how that, the deferred sales trust is actually an investment rather than an expense right now? Yeah, you're, I mean, we've been through these conversations, but I keep having revelations and more revelations. There's a lot of things to think about. And, and my mind is about to blow up on things. It I is. Want to I know, I know everyone has my, own, my own life right after this. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. And again, we're recording this. So we're going to be able to go back and you're going to be able to watch this. Okay. And just email Mitch and Julie for, 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 for the link for that. And the next one is the estate tax, Mitch. You know, let's, let's say Mitch is worth, you know, 52 million bucks. And let's say he's put none of it outside of his taxable estate. Well, guess what, Mitch, the government's going to do. They're going to say, Mitch, if you die, yeah, you'll get a stepped up basis on that 56 million or the 52 million, but we want our cut. We want 40%. It's called the death tax. So guess what? They want, they want you to stay all of that inside of your taxable estate. Well, you might do some planning, you know, you might, you might do some family limited partnerships. You might try to give to your kids, but guess what? Most people before they meet us that are ultra high net worth, they can't get it out fast enough. Meaning they can't gift enough away. They can't do it. And so, we have a solution. It's called the Deferred Sales Trust Plus. They can literally sell and move on that one single transaction, that one single deal. Let's imagine it was a $30 million deal. You can move it all outside your taxable estate. Getting you back to the 2020 federal state tax exclusion numbers, saving you $12 million. So, so Mitch, would you rather have your funds inside your taxable estate or outside? I'd rather not pay tax. You got it. So we have a solution for that. By the way, these, these are set to expire in 2025 and we think they're going to go be cut in half. So if you're married right now, it's about 23 million, but it's probably going to be cut to about 12 or so in 2025. And then likewise, this 12 million, if you're single, is going to be cut to six. So the intent is to get your stuff outside your taxable estate and to do it in one transaction in one day, very simple with a deferred sales trust. The next one is the partnership separation. You may have a partnership that you want to get out of. We just did a $2.6 million deal in, 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 in uh, Alabama, and the gentleman had 600000 of tax, and he had two other partners. And so he wanted to, he wanted to uh, get out, but they weren't selling the business. But they bought him out, so we separated the partnership, and we saved him his own deferred sales trust. It was seamless. The whole entity didn't have to move. Pretty sweet. That's exactly what John did, too, John and Steve. They went their separate ways on their deal and Steve did his deferred sales trust and then John ended up doing a little uh, a little 1031 for his deal. So the last thing is we already mentioned it but I'll remind you no timing guidelines you can purchase at a discount. This is how it's going to become an investment rather than an expense. New depreciation schedule plus we can do cost segregation on top of that. 
You're debt free. You can invest into multiple commercial real estate syndications. You can get diversification. And then it can save your failed 1031. If all you take from this right now is you should always have a backup plan and it should always be the deferred sales trust if you're doing a 1031 exchange. It's like playing with fire if you're not having it as a backup plan. So those are the three secrets. So we're winding down here, Mitch. Let me ask, let me ask you this and everyone who's listening right now. Mitch, if you just set a call with your trusted CPA, which you've already done, an attorney with capital gains tax solutions in and the deferred sales trust attorneys just to confirm this works and is legal if you just did that and if you were just to sit down with your financial advisor and, and the financial advisors on our side too and mapped out where the funds would be invested and the risk was accounted for and then if you were just to sit down with me and we walked and mapped out and with your cpa how the dst could actually be an investment and not an expense mitch do you see how you could do this yes do you see how your listeners can do this Yes. Okay. Uh, you know, I can't do it by myself and I don't know it well enough, but I think with your help, I will be able to see how to do it. And with my CPA's uh, guidance, I would be very comfortable. Uh, you know, I'm not completely dumb, you know, so I, I can make decisions, but I, I want to have, you know, a second and third set of eyes. I would never try this by myself because I, I wouldn't know where to start. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You wouldn't do, you wouldn't have the knee surgeon do, you know, uh, who's been your general practitioner do the surgery, he would hire a specialist and you guys all get together and say, Hey, he, he does that. That's what we, we specialize in. So, um, the fiscal side of it is, you know, you just say, what are all the fees? What's it going to take to get all this done? And then you look at the upside versus the fee. It's really not a decision once, you know, as, as far as financially. Um, so you want to make sure that it makes financial sense, but that's what you're there for to size it up, to give those answers for. So I can see, you know, like the perspective, HUD statement on this whole deal. You know, I want to, where's everything going? What do I make? How much does it cost? You know, it's just like the cost of borrowing money. I've paid 18, 19% to borrow money. It didn't matter because the deal was so lucrative. It just didn't matter. You know, it wasn't the cost of the money. It was the availability. And this is the same thing to, to, to get into this, you know, you got it. You nailed it. Your return on your investment, which we're going to get into right here. So let me just ask you a question, right? I know it feels like a fire hose, right? And I, we just, just, you're just, oh my gosh, your brain is, 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 is racing. And it's a lot. Um, do you see, do you want my help? Right. That's all we would say. We we've done it the hard way. We've done it out. I've given you like all my secrets. I just ask you this, give me another 10 minutes. I'm going to walk you through an offer. I'm going to explain the fees. And would you like me to help you? And if so, connect with Mitch, connect with me. And we would love the opportunity to serve you and your family help you create and preserve more wealth. So here's the offer, all right? First of all, I want to give you instant access. If you're a listener to Mitch and you are a owner of, of something that you're considering selling, I want to give you instant access to our online uh, media and training, okay? Uh, it includes master classes, frequently asked questions, fee schedules, um, research on the deferred sales trust. I want to give you that right away, but you need to make sure you mention Mitch, okay? Uh, but what you're going to get if you actually use the deferred sales trust, and we're going to give you the pricing right after this. First of all, you're going to get white glove CPA tax attorney access. You can bring your trusted CPA and Mitch can attest to this. He brought his trusted CPA and to get the education, to get the blessing and it's no cost. Okay. No cost to do that. You get the law firm lifetime audit indemnification with over a $20 million ENO insurance policy, which they've never had to tap into. You're going to get transparent 24 seven access to view your account with real online updates. You're going to get the DACA SunWest bank account. We talked about the protection of your cash. It's like an escrow account. Escrow has all the funds all the time um, and insures funds are protected and only move with your signature. You're going to get white gloves, seamless transaction coordination. We'll work with your commercial real estate broker, your escrow company, your lender, whoever. You're going to get white glove professional banker, direct access customer support. You can call him. He's fantastic. His name is Michael and he's a part of this as well. You can get professionally prepared tax return services for your deferred sales trust with a 55 year old CPA firm. You can get white glove seamless LLC formation and funding coordination onboarding service, ex uh, excluding the, uh, the attorney cost to set up. Uh, there's a small cost to set that up, but showing you how to launch your first LLC to purchase with your deferred sales trust. You're going to get access to some of the top wealth advisors in the U S including live, um, which is Mitch and one of them right here where you can get a chance to invest with him. Now he's a real estate wealth advisor, not necessarily like a financial advisor, but we do have wealth advisors that manage funds for MLB. Uh, for Mercedes-Benz, for their pension plans, some of the best in the U.S. 
Uh, you're going to get lifetime IRS audit defense, again, with the number one installment sale law firm in the U.S. with a 100% successful track record. And as a bonus, we're going to give you access to professionally managed value-add commercial real estate syndications with sponsors just like Mitch with proven track records. Um, but more so, we want you, we, if you're listening to this, we want you to invest with Mitch. But we realize, too, if you sell a $3 million deal, you may not put all $3 million with Mitch, but you might get, put a million with Mitch, right? And you might want to put a million on your own deal, and then you might want to keep a million liquid. We're going to give you some diversification and some options there, but it's your choice. There's, there's, there's no, uh, there's, there's no um, yeah, force I, there. I, I think it's like Brett's saying, we just want to let, give you the chance to see if there's a fit. There's never any pressure about anything. It's just see if there's a fit. You know, I do something uniquely different. It might make sense to you, or it might be one of the things you want to do to diversify your pool. You know, uh, uh, some of y'all may be so big, I couldn't even get all your money out if I wanted to, because I don't overload myself. I only take, you know, what I can handle in my town, you know, that I can watch over with all my might, you know, and make sure. So, so, and that's all, we're, that's the whole thing. Excellent. And we'll also help you with some living trust and estate planning. If you're looking to that, we have some of the best attorneys who can do that as well. So again, who this works for? Remember, primary homeowner, business owner, car dealerships, tech entrepreneur, dentists, veterinarians, optometrists, uh, collectibles, artworks, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, S-Corp, C-Corp, a real estate developer, LLCs, LPs, partnerships, individuals. So if you're a high net worth individual, you're selling for at least uh, you know a million or more net proceeds, $500,000 of gain, this works for you. You can see why people, our clients, are paying us 100000 to set up the deferred sales. You can see why they, they might do that, right? Um, and these are all the stories we kind of shared throughout the presentation here. And I know this sounds too good to be true, right? This is, what we, this, is, this is what I thought, too, 10 years ago when I learned about it, and even Mitch when he first heard about it. But I pressed him, and he, he was open-minded, and, and he did his due diligence. But don't worry. We have a reference list, and it's a very long list with very successful high-net-worth individuals that you can speak with directly. And second, bring your trusted advisor. Bring him to the table to speak with us to do your due diligence. No cost on our side. We have a no cost, no obligation, due diligence uh, opportunity for you to vet us. And we only charge and close. Uh, we, only, we only actually charge if you close on the deferred sales trust. So it's 100% no cost unless you choose the deferred sales trust and your actual deal closes. So you can get started now for just 1.5% closing cost. Now, that is uh, the the kind of the closing cost. Is, let's say it's a million bucks, Mitch. You're selling your property for that's fifteen grand. Okay. Now, hopefully, we saved you the four hundred thousand, right? So you could say, oh, I could pay the four hundred, or I could do the fifteen. Now, ongoing, there's some ongoing fees too. It's about one point five percent of the net proceeds into the trust. But hopefully, we've out earned that, right? Remember, eight percent net of all fees. Hopefully, we're earning nine and a half, ten. Can't guarantee that. But over a 10-year period of time, we have a track record with some of the top financial advisors that have been able to do that over 10 years. Some years might be 4%, some years might be 12, some years might be negative 2, some years might be plus 10. But over that 10-year period of time, we're going to hopefully out-earn what you would have paid in tax and then just keep this thing working for you with all of the other advantages. So you can go to, uh, you can get a free consultation. You can go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com. Now you need to mention Mitch here, okay? So make sure you mention Mitch. We have a we have a, a JV Alliance going here, and uh, and so please mention Mitch. Now if you're a business professional, you can go to experttaxsecrets.com. If you're a realtor, if you're a financial advisor, if you're a business broker, if you're a commercial real estate syndicator, okay, operator. Uh, we believe this is the future and you can help your clients right now escape feeling trapped by capital gains tax. We have our coaching, we have our online program, and you can get started today for just $197. Go to experttaxsecrets.com. So um, the total value, we put 125 grand, but we think it's, uh, it's more, than, uh, more than equitable. Again, as long as your tax liability is big enough. So here's a quick fee breakdown. Let's imagine it was a $10 million sale. And by the way, at 10 million, we actually do to go a little bit lower than the 1.5, but Imagine you would have paid $4 million in tax, Mitch. Well, you could pay the $150,000, and let's look at the difference. Well, the difference is about $3.85 million. More, that's working for you. So that, that would be a, um, a real good, uh, good return on your investment, right, Mitch? That's what I was saying. It, it, just do the math, and if, the, if, if you've got the right deal and you've got the right um, assets that you're selling, I mean, the numbers will speak for themselves. All right, so we're going to jump right into the questions, and I appreciate your, uh, your, uh, your, your patience here. So we have from Rick, we have when, Peter in, uh, when Peter's in the example paid off his debt, was the amount that he used to pay the debt subject to capital gains tax? So great question, Rick. Only the amount that might be uh, above and beyond his, um, his basis. So in his scenario, his mortgage 
um, there was a little bit of a mortgage over basis. So that little chunk, yes, he did pay a little bit there, but most of our deals, um, the mortgage is below the basis. So that that's important that, um, that, that you understand that only we can only defer, um, uh, up into the basis. Okay. So in other words, you couldn't just refinance everything, Mitch, right before close and then have all that cash, which is tax free, and then sell and then defer the tax. The government goes, no, 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 no. Only up until your basis. Can you do that? Right? So, so great question, Rick. Um, Greg says, what is the approximate ongoing fee percentage? About 1.5%, Greg. Um, now there's a tax return uh, fee of about 1200 per year. There is a DACA of about $1,500 per year. That's with the bank account. Okay, and there's a $250 mark to market report, which we do reporting for four times or four times per year, but it's a one time fee of 250. But remember, we're hopefully to earn nine and a half or 10 over a 10 year period. So net of fees net you eight of any recurring fees, but it's about one and a half percent. Just that's, that's and no matter how and where the funds are invested. And that includes the financial advising fee. That includes the trustee fee. Okay, so uh, that is a great, great question. Um, how does the deferred sales trust work if the property you're selling has appreciated and has substantial capital gains tax liability, but also has a mortgage on it? Okay, so again, you can sell, pay off all the debt, and then just put the proceeds into the trust. So we're not at 1031. We don't have to replace equal or greater value, right? IRC 1031 is one part of the tax code which requires it. That's the blockbuster way of doing things. The deferred sales trust is the opposite. It's a Netflix. We don't have to take on any more debt. Okay. Now, if you happen to have a little bit of a mortgage over basis, we're doing a, a deal right now. We're helping the gentleman do a partial Delaware statutory trust because he does have a mortgage over basis. He's selling his building, uh, his mobile home park for six and a half million. He has a zero basis and a 4.5 million of debt. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a partial 1031, partial Delaware 1031 for that mortgage. So we're going to eliminate that. And then we're going to put the rest of it into the deferred sales trust. And so get with us and we have a solution for that. If you're, if that's what you're saying, Rick, which I think that's what you're saying. Um, we'll do a portion of that. Um, I have some comments here too. I, it's not really a question, but it's a comment. I think sure. it's a, a worthy comment. Um, some of my friends just are just texting me direct. So, um, this one comment just says, you know, you see everyone out there screaming that the rich get richer and the rich don't pay taxes, but these, these things are available to anybody who wants to do this. And maybe you can't start with this program, but there's, you know, you start with your IRAs, you build them up, you do some stuff, but the tactics that they're using are available to everyone. They're just, who's going to do it and who's going to go through and do this study and call you and get the consult and, 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 you know, so I just thought it was a good point. You know, these it's a great point. Yeah, he's exactly right. I think Tom real talks about this, that basically it's the equal protection of the law. They can't discriminate for people using a tax law here or here, whether you're worth $10 billion, $10 million, a million dollars, 500,000, as long as you all got to play by the same set of rules. And as long as we say, play by those same set of rules, they need to be, uh, uh, um, it applies. The law doesn't discriminate in that sense. Okay. So exactly right. Um, let's see here. Uh, we got Rick. It says, Rick says, I know you can't guarantee, but if Biden wins and does away with 1031, do you think DHT would survive? <clears throat> yeah, we absolutely do, Rick. And it's a great question because they're separate tax codes. So IRC 1031 is that part of the tax code. We're IRC 453. And even more than that, even if they said, well, we're giving away with the 1031. Now we're going to do away with the, with, with IRC 453. Well, the reason we think IRC 43 is so safe is because it came back during the kind of the great depression era. Where, where the economy collapsed and they didn't want to take on the bank as the government. They want private citizens to be the bank and have the option to be the bank. And so the study of macroeconomic states, if we can keep the money flowing and free in the, in the people's hands, they're more likely to A, sell deals, defer tax, and B, invest in more, which in, would C, creates more jobs and more tax revenue. And so the reason we think that they will not take away IRC 453 is for that exact reason, they they can't afford to be the bank. They need to incentivize people like Mitch and Brett and Rick and whoever's selling to have the option to sell and still defer the tax. Okay. And to become the bank if need be right. Otherwise, why would you, why would you ever, why would you ever do a deal with somebody um, if you can't defer the tax? So that's why we think that's, I that's, have a more uh, cynical answer. Yeah. The reason why they get rid of these things is they, they already know about the tax deferred trust. Too many people now know about this 1031. So there's, 
billions and billions of dollars running through there. They don't want to eliminate a tax breaks for themselves, but they know that you don't know about this. This is relatively obscure to most people. So they just kick this one down the road. They know they're not going to lose their tax out because they're just, they already know about this. The problem is, is they pass mountains and mountains of, of, of legislation every year, mountains. And then they pass these little things in so that they can take advantage of, 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 of the law that they just passed themselves, but they don't send a memo to you and me. It takes people like Brett to introduce us to what has been allowed for us. You know, uh, you know, you can't, we can't keep track of everything, uh, much less all the legislation. So um, Brett is just Very a professional well at keeping track of what, how his industry is affected and how this tax defer stuff is, def is affected. And, and he's bringing us up to speed. Again, just to address that previous comment, the people that stay on podcasts like this and study money and study how to, you know, one part of the equation is to make the money. That's the first part of the equation. If, you know, if you don't have money, forget about tax referral and all this stuff. Let, I mean, for the most part, you got to figure out how you're going to make some money. Then when you, the second part of the equation, though, comes very quickly. You start learning how to make money very quickly. You figure out, wow, making money is only half the problem. I got to learn how to keep this money. And I have to learn how to keep it legally and without a bunch of stress and hassle, the least amount you can. So I think that's my cynical reply to the other reason why they probably won't let it go. Yeah, no, it's a great point. It's a great point. And exactly, we're still just a very small sliver, okay? Because we're so specialized, we're real niche. Literally, there's one law firm. There's just, uh, uh, you know, there's, every deal needs one trustee. And then there's a business partner who's the, who's the financial advisor, co-founder co of the Deferred Sales Trust. And so it's not like we keep it proprietary and we keep it protected. And now we do have national law firms. We have thousands of financial advisors who signed up with us. We've done deals with Marcus or Millichap, Keller Williams, all kinds of different title companies. Like we, we've done all the deals. There's all there. The track record's there. It's just, it is still just very, very slim. Like we don't have like a QI company. They have like a whole like 5,000 companies across the U.S., and we don't have that like it's it's very niche and anyway so keep moving on to the next question here it says you may have answered already my apologies but i don't recall does the dst defer recapture of depreciation it depends on the 1245 or 1250 depreciation okay so i'm not the tax attorney cpa but get with us and let's look at it okay again and as long as your mortgage is not above your basis then then yes and and we have a dst and a dst plus okay so um and we can we Yes, there's a solution for you as long as your mortgage is not above your basis. That's the best way to put it, and it does work for re recapture of depreciation. Um, the next question from Rick says, and these are great questions, Rick. Thanks for asking them. How does the process of transferring real estate to the trust work? Is the value set when the trust actually sells the property? Correct. The trust will only do a deal and mirror what the buyer is already going to pay for. So we're asking the buyer to come with the full value of whatever you guys have already negotiated. And they need to come with the bank loan or all cash. They're going to come with all of that closing. And the trust will only do the deal with, with Mitch. He'll say it's on Mitch's deal. Um, um, and then buy it and then sell it for that same price. So it's all agreed upon, right? This happens all the time. It's called an assignment of sale. Yeah, you might have bought a property, you got a good price, and you're going to assign it to somebody else, right? And maybe even get a, 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 an upgrade, right, or, a, or an increase. So in this one, we're just going to mirror that. Um, I, I have a question. Yeah. So, you know, you find your buyer and you want to set this in motion. I mean, does this happen relatively quickly? Because, you know, I, in my own mind, I have this fear, like, if it drags on and on and on while you're trying to get everything together, is am I going to lose my sale? So how, how fast does this happen? Great, great question. So uh, the answer is keep with this early, right? Ideally, you're doing this before you're selling your property. I found the best practice is to do your due diligence on us and the strategy before you actually sell, okay? So before you sell, you, you, you just like get your exit plan in place. Okay, check that box off. 1031 is checked off and deferred sales trust is checked off. Okay, I might use one or the other. Um, okay, great. Now let's list my property. Now let's sell it. And now I'm going, okay, I'm definitely doing this one, right? So that's the first thing we would recommend. Now, that being said, we, we're closing a deal, you know, a week before they've never heard of it. We gawk, talk them through it and we close in a week. We've done it. We've done deals in 72 hours. We've saved 1031 exchanges in the last minute. Nobody likes to work under those pressure circumstances, right? That's why you want to get educated, get to know us, you know, get, talk to the bank, talk to our references. Um, now, little caveat on that too. If the buyer has removed all contingencies on a commercial real estate property, we need to send it to a QI company 
Not every QI company is created equal, Mitch. Guess what? They don't want you to know about this, but some of them, they want you to know about it. They want you to give you options, right? And so I don't send any of my deals ever to anyone who won't give the option for the 1031 and the deferred sales trust. I used to send, I don't know, countless millions of dollars every year to a company. I won't mention, but they don't allow the deferred sales trust. They don't want it as competition or whatever their, you know, whatever the reason is. I don't ever send them anymore. So I send it to these other ones. So we have those companies ready to go. So make sure you get with us. They don't charge you any more than you would have paid anyways. So A. B, uh, if you're selling a primary home or a business or something else, there's no 1031 option. Remember that. So you need to get with us before close of escrow, before they remove all contingencies. We need to add some language in there that you have an option or a right to a deferred sales trust and no additional cost to the buyer. We'll get you that specific language. And now you have that option, okay? And then now as close of escrow comes, we transact. Does that make sense, Mitch? Can the title company be one of those problems? Because I know title companies often, often own 1031 exchange companies. No, we, every, we've, done, we've, done, we've done deals with Old Republic. We've done deals with Placer Title, Orange Coast Title. I mean, you name it, we've done it um, probably with them. But, but uh, could they be a problem? They just don't know, right? And they want to protect you too. They're wanting like, who are these people? So just, just introduce you, uh, them to us. And we also oftentimes get with their legal team and then all of a sudden they know. So, so, uh, yeah, but do it in advance. Like this is not yeah. the time to wait for the last minute. If you, advance. If you have a yeah. big problem, you, I mean, I'm sorry, not a problem. If you have a big property or you know that in the future, you're going to have to liquidate a business or something of substantial girth, then, then, you know, start the process early, get all the questions and get your CPA and everyone to get on the same page and say, okay, if, and when this happens, we're all on board, we're going over here. You got it. Instead of being in the emotional state of I'm selling my $10 million business and I'm just, I'm just so focused. Oh no, I got 30 days to close. And I got this big tax bill. And now you're trying to make decisions under the veil of pressure. We like to say, just no, don't do that. Do it well before, maybe a year or two before you're going to sell. We're working with a, a, a dentist right now. He's selling it for five to 7 million. And he's like, I'm going to do it for my little real estate deal to start. And we'll do a little $300,000 deal. And I want to, I want to ride the bike first and I'm going to be selling in, in a year or two. So that, I think that's a great way to do it too. All right. So we have, we have people raising their hands. So I'm going to see how we do that. Um, uh, I'm going to try to see how do, how do we, okay. Okay. Here we go. Allowed to talk. Okay. Here we go. Leonardo, you're on go. And you might have to go off and mute, uh, Leonardo, uh, ask to unmute. I'm going to try that. And then we'll give you a chance to talk. I feel like we're, we're on a radio show here, Mitch. Here we well, go. I like, I like that. Yeah. Leonardo, are you there? Can you hear us? Uh, you got you're, you to unmute yourself if you want. You raise your hand there. Um, One question is, is there a cost for the consult? You know? No, no, no cost for the consult. We only charge if you close the deal. Uh, if you're a business professional, we have our coaching program, right? Um, but that's separate for the business professional. But no, no cost, no obligation, due diligence, including the tax attorneys are on our um, – and including the financial advisor, uh, my business partner, and including myself, okay? So Leonardo, we tried. I don't know what else to do on the, on the uh, raising the hand, uh, except you have to unmute on the bottom, bottom, bottom left. So we're gonna go on to the next question. Let's see if anyone else has raised their hand. Um, we have from, um, uh, okay, we got that one ongoing. We talked about that one. Um, I don't know if on Facebook, there's any questions there. Um, we are recording the webinars, another one. Um, okay. I'm going to go to Facebook real fast and just check to see if there's any questions there. And if not, we will, we will wrap this, wrap this up for everybody. Uh, let's see here. Looks like we have nothing on Facebook. Mitch, you got anything on your end? I think we're good then. Uh, I, you know, I don't, yeah can't see my Facebook. I could run over there, but I'm, I'm sure yeah. I'll mess something up. So well, uh, everybody, we really appreciate you. Um, well, hold on. We got a chat here. Is there no cost? We got that. Nope. We got that. Um, we really appreciate you. And again, if you're going to, to look at this, make sure you mention Mitch, make sure you contact Mitch. And if you contact me, mention Mitch and, uh, I'll share the screen one last time for, for the contact there. Okay. It's Brett at capital gains, tax solutions.com. Um, you can call or email me. All right. And then if you are a business professional, you can go to experttaxsecrets.com. Make sure you put in two T's. That second T could be a little bit, uh, uh, you know, it could be a little, little bit uh, hard, it could be easy to miss. So experttaxsecrets.com. With that, Mitch, any last words before we let everybody go? 
Man, I just want to thank you so much. I want to thank everybody, uh, 1000houses.com and the followers that came from my podcast and stuff when I was talking about this, everyone on Facebook Live. If you have any questions, didn't have time or you're driving, uh, Mitch at 1000houses.com, I'll get you in touch. So Mitch at 1000houses.com, 1000houses.com. If you haven't had time to write all this down or snap this, we'll be around. Just, we won't be hard to find. Just get a hold of me. I'll get you what you need. Exactly. All right. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks, everybody. Bye now. I know. All right, that's a wrap, Mitch.